After working as a consultant, building smart contracts and teaching thousands of people how to build smart contracts and become smart contract developers, I have uh, collected a lot of lessons learned from this time and I thought I would share my top three things that every smart contract or blockchain developer should know of when they code smart contracts. And uh, without further ado, I'm just going to go straight into it. If you have any further tips or lessons that you have learned, you can leave them in the comments below. We can start to build on this list. The first thing is that the stakes are way higher. The stakes or the risks perhaps, but the stakes are higher. And what do I mean by this? Well, I mean that we are dealing with money. Uh, smart contracts handles money. And it's the first time ever really that we have code that can handle, handle money. And it is usually, in many cases at least, other people's money. And not only uh, do a contract, a, a program that holds money, sort of inspire people to try to target you and to hack your contract, it also makes it, as I said, the stakes are so much higher because if you get hacked, then you might risk losing millions of dollars, for example. It has happened so many times now, I, I can't even remember how many times we see these hacks. Um, but if you, have, if you compare that to a normal program that you develop, a web page or any other type of server that you have, if you don't really have any kind of direct money ties to that, the, uh, the, the risks are way lower. And that is something that you need to have in mind. And this implies, or this gives you uh, some steps that you need to take as a developer, really. Uh, you need to make uh, a lot more tests, even though you should test all code, but you need to make way more tests. You need to test it way more thoroughly. And you need to really think about uh, design patterns, how you design and lay out your code. Um, and there is so much more. I could, I could ravel on this entire day. But uh, this actually is uh, the inspiration for the next course that we are doing in the, uh, in the academy. Uh, it's a smart contract security course and we go through all of these kind of things that developers need to know and we take a look at some of the hacks that has been happening and we also uh, look at the things like upgradability, how we can upgrade smart contracts, add new features in the future if you get hacked, build proxy contracts, impossible contracts, uh, all types of things that you need to think about as a developer. So a lot of this is covered in the new course where you can check out at the academy. The uh, second thing that I think we all should uh, should learn is that you can't trust anyone uh, or actually it's gonna say don't trust anyone and uh, this may seem uh, cynical uh, oh, come on I can't talk and write at the same time don't trust anyone and I don't mean that you're not gonna trust you know your friends or you're not gonna trust uh, me or you're not gonna trust any any other person that you see but you shouldn't trust other people's code or smart contract you should always take for granted that any external contract that you interact with can cause you harm. So uh, this is in regards to especially external contracts and libraries. Because many contracts depend on maybe uh, oracles or uh, just external contracts in general that you interact with. And the issue is that external contracts can do you a lot of harm if you don't know exactly that they are trusted. Uh, someone could, for example, update that external contract and replace it with um, with uh, malicious code, and then you could be targeted. Or w w this has happened before that people have had bad libraries that has uh, actually uh, started uh, that that caused a uh, a loophole in the, and an attack surface to open up. So every sort of dependency that you have to libraries, to oracles, to external contracts, you need to make sure that all of these are trusted and you need to do that thoroughly incredibly important and the third thing that every smart contract developer should know is that you need to uh, plan for the future and you may seem well what do you mean i always have to plan for the future well this is different when it comes to software developer development and if you compare it to i mean web development i can i can at any time update my website i can at any time update the code running on my server with the smart contracts, it is different. Uh, on their own, they are immutable, so you can't change it in the future. But uh, so that that leads you to that leads you to the need of planning for the future. You need to really sit down and think about what type of functionality could I need in the future. Not only you know what functionality do I need now, but what sort of possibilities could I find myself in the future um, 
and you need to include that functionality in your contract today. And that's not the case. You don't really think about that. If you develop a, any sort of business or website or program today or an app, you don't think about the possible scenarios that can happen in the future when you have thousands of customers or clients, whatever. And it is true that there exists such a thing as uh, upgradable smart contracts. And that is quite tricky. So we can use, uh, uh, for example, proxies to build, uh, to build upgradable contracts, pro proxies. And this we also, uh, we also teach in the course. So the, uh, the security course, the smart contract security uh, the course. We, we go through all of this, how to build upgradable contracts, how to use proxies and how to actually think uh, and get into the mindset of having to plan for the future, having to think about what will happen if, for example, one of my oracles or one of my external contracts become, uh, they become hacked and, or they become malicious, how can I act so that my contract is still safe? How can I upgrade that and prevent hackers from actually going in and messing with my contract? All of that we go through there. But these are things that you don't think about if you're just a regular developer and that has led to a lot of pain in the smart contract world a lot of hacks that shouldn't have happened um, so all of these things are incredibly important but i would say they all fit together within this uh, one first point that stakes and risks are higher and you need to think about everything about your contract before you deploy you need to go through it 10 times 20 times to make sure that you have checked your external contract, you have, you have checked all of the centralized bottlenecks that you might have and you have done all of your unit tests for example and you have made sure that you have a proxy in place, that you have the right permissions in place, you have the possible functionality in place and plus all of this you need to be able to communicate that to a world that is decentralized, that looks for immutability. So how do you combine you know, an upgradable contract with immutability? That is super difficult, something we also you know, touch in the, in the security course, the smart contract security course. So, so much to think about as if you want to be a smart contract developer, uh, the risks are so much higher, but also the reward is so much higher. It's so much fun to work with programs that actually deal with money and actually build things that we haven't seen before. It's incredibly exciting. And uh, I think that's why we're all are here. So if you're interested in that, you can check out the course over at the Avalon Tech Academy. Uh, I teach this part, so you can go to academy.ivanontech.com and sign up. Um, otherwise, if you have any more tips that you would like to give to smart contract developers, uh, you could leave it in the comment section. Uh, and uh, we could continue to build on this, uh, on this list and we can discuss in there. With that being said, I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this type of content, this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Otherwise, you can hit the thumbs down button. Uh, but either way, I want you to get subscribed, hit that bell button so that you don't miss my next video. Um, with that being said, once again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.